Dulcinetti Show with Robert Armbruster and his orchestra, our guest for this evening, and starring Nelsonetti. <laughs> Down the street, people stand on their feet. They love to see a soldier. Though they jump on your chest, you fall in with the rest. You want to see a soldier. You will run half a mile, but it's well worth your while. Because somebody has told you that coming down the street, you'll hear the feet marching feet. Oh, how you run to see a soldier. Because there's something about a soldier, something about a soldier, something about a soldier that is fine, fine, fine. He may be a great big general, maybe a sergeant major, maybe a simple private of the line, line, line. But there's something about his bearing, something in what he's wearing, something about his buttons, all a shine, shine, shine. Oh, a military chest seems to suit the ladies best. There's something about a soldier that is fine, fine, fine. I'll be here in San 
fact that our guest for this evening is a very talented young lady. You weren't just a woofing, either. And I... Pardon me, Frank, what was that you just said? You weren't just a woofing. You That's uh, junior set jargon. It means uh, you aren't kidding. You're right. Oh. Now, look, Nelson, when we talk to Lois Butler, we'll have to be on the beam. Hmm. We can't be a square pair, you know. Oh, we can't, huh? Well, I should say not. Well, I'm glad you told me. Now, as I was about to say, Lois Butler made her first professional appearance as a ballet dancer and singer. That was nine years ago, and she was then three years old. Later, Lois made her first concert appearance at the University of California in Los Angeles. That was six years ago, and she was then six years old. I get it. Now she's 12. Frank, gentlemen, do not discuss a lady's age in public. As I was about to say, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lois Butler. I was one singer to another. He's called me Nelson. Thank you, Nelson. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, the pleasure's all ours, Lois. We've been looking forward to this visit. He's not just a woofing, either. <laughs> Pardon me, Nelson. What was that you just said? Um, he's not just a woofing. That's a phrase Frank Graham used a while ago. Where in the world do you suppose he heard that? Why, well, I don't know. It's amazing the words adults pick up these days. <laughs> Isn't it, though? I wish youngsters wouldn't be so careless with their speech. Yeah, grown-ups are such imitators, especially radio announcers. <laughs> <coughs> Looks like a good time to change the subject. Uh, I'd like to ask Lois if this is her first appearance on the air. No, it isn't, Frank. I've been on several programs. Mail call and command performance, among others. That was a special broadcast for the men overseas. A little later on, Lois and I will sing a duet. But now she's going to sing a song that made a hit with the G.I.s. It's Russian Nightingale. <laughs> now sings another of the lovely songs from the production Song of Norway. It's I Love You. I hear you ask if I am yours for keeping Shame that a doubt should Your dancing eyes, I love 
song for tonight. Yes, Frank, it's Bun Thorn's song from Patience. Bun Thorn is a nice young fellow who wants everyone to admire him. Well, that's understandable, except that Bun Thorn assumes the extreme affectations of a would-be poet. Strangely enough, his system seems to work. And here Bun Thorn tells you what to do if you're anxious for the shine. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
song of the sea, a barrel-chested chanty that tells you how sailors feel when the course is set for the best of all good ports. It's Roll Along Home. <laughs> Radio service. 